Fallout 4 takes place in the Commonwealth, a vast landmass full of iconic landmarks to discover, cities, towns and settlements to explore and call home, and plenty of interesting people handing out adventures to keep you busy. But it's also home to a huge and often overlooked water system. With a sprawling ocean area hiding secrets in its depths, and interesting areas on its surface, as well as rivers and streams creeping inland, which are often just an obstacle to pass on your way to an adventure. So, what would happen if you were trapped in these watery areas? What adventures could you discover? And more importantly, is it possible for you to live in this area on survival mode? Well, that's what I intend to find out, so let's go over the rules for this challenge. My adventure can only focus on the water sections of the map, but anything in the water is explorable, so shipwrecks and any structure or island within the water is fair game. Survival mode is on, so I'll be fighting off hunger and thirst, sickness, and even the fact that the water will be poisoning me with radiation constantly until I find a solution. Plus, enemies will pack a lot more of a punch. I can only use items found within the water, so forget anything from the vault and prepare for a very cold first dip into the water. And finally, no exploits or mods. This adventure is just me and my knowledge of the game to hopefully keep me alive. So, let's join the star of the show, Jared Mimosa, a pre-war actor who stars in the mediocre film series Aquaboy. Definitely not taking inspiration from any real-life film property, and has carefully selected stats to hopefully give him the best chance of survival in his moist new world. With his pre-war career cut short due to an unfortunate nuclear event, and his family torn apart by an incident while he was defrosting, it's time to head to his fortress of solitude, shed everything from his previous life, and dive headfirst into the radiation-filled depths of his new adventure. And so begins Phase 1, The Rad Race. There's one huge issue with water in Fallout, and that is it's a rad-filled death trap. So I'm in a race against time to solve this issue. Needing a level up for a perk point, I've got no choice but to head towards danger. And using the mysterious powers of the niche mid-2000s action hero the Zohan, I can limit my rad exposure by propelling myself out of the water like a dolphin towards the floating raider outpost of Libertalia. Arriving with a lot of rads and without any weapons to kill raiders, I need to hope I find something useful. And luckily, the raiders have left a few corpses with loot on some sort of shrine. So under fire, I loot and head back to the safety of another barge. Equipped with a hide outfit and the worst gun in the wasteland, it's time to take the fight to the raiders. Or maybe not, as I get killed within a second of leaving cover. Attempt 2 and a new route looking for different loot goes just as well, with me receiving a pipe to the head to put me out of my misery. But a smooth sea doesn't make a skilled sailor, so I persevere until I have a plan. There's no one here. Just go back to your business. There's bodies though. Bottle caps, carrots, athletic outfit. Okay, we've got some things. Let's get out, let's get out. Ow! Where's the guy? I can't see him. Am I about to get a peek on him here? Okay, he sees me. Oh crap, there he is. Oh god! I can kill him. There's a turret though, I need to be careful. Stop shooting. Okay, we've got the level. We've got the level. The XP from the Raider kill, as well as finding Libertalia, is enough to push me to level 2, and I take the Aqua Boy perk, which lets me breathe underwater, and stops me taking rads when swimming. Now I've got the tool I need to explore with freedom, but there's still issues to solve, mainly getting rads away to reduce my rad damage, as well as finding food, water, and a bed to keep me alive. So with my new water breathing, it's time to explore the depths and islands for some much needed supplies. And who knows, maybe we'll find some companionship so we're not alone in the world. The first place I find is floating wreckage with a basic dock someone has crafted. There's a fishing rod on board a boat, but sadly we never received an update to let us fish up mutated creatures of the ocean. So move on. But under the floating wreck is a boat with a pipe rifle and some ammo, so I'll happily take that. Drawn to another wreck by the noises of an even uglier version of a seagull, I find a fun little mascot for the adventure that I definitely don't completely forget about for the rest of the playthrough. Before stumbling on a perfectly preserved piece of food that I decide I want. Pie machine? Pie machine? There's food? Okay, I've got to try this. Has to be done. First try. No. Okay. That was anticlimactic. I'm being a stubborn fool, keep trying, and trying, and trying, until I finally receive Todd's blessing, while nearly spilling my dinner on the keyboard. Oh my god! 
I've got it. I think it was like seven attempts. There's no way. Oh, I looked away and I, I saw it going over. Oh my god. <laughs> Perfect preserved pie. And the blessing continues as I discover a couple of ships anchored together, which just so happens to hold a box with some rad away. This is huge as with half of my health gone to radiation, I'm a pretty easy target for enemies. Followed by a floating structure, which I think single-handedly saved this challenge. Okay, this is creepy. Lit candles. Little shrine. Around the mysterious phone. What else will this weird island hold? That fall in the water. Okay, it looks promising. Another dead, another dead guy. Advanced safe. Hot plate. Does a hot plate do what I think it does? Circuitry. Perfect. Okay, with the circuitry, we can get the recruitment beacon. We just need crystal now. It's got to be crystal somewhere. And we can sleep on the mattress. Okay. Base of operations, temporarily. And we've got fruit. Mutt fruit, silk bean, potato plant. Oh my god. This is perfect. Okay, microscope. What does microscope have? Crystal. Right, we've got the recruitment beacon. We're saved. With the crystal and circuitry needed to make a recruitment beacon, as well as food, we can plan for a farm. There's now one mission for survival. Take Spectacle Island. Well, that won't be easy. So we heal up our radiation wounds, get some rest to save the game and protect our progress, and hide from the strange weather phenomenon we experience in this wasteland. And while I wait out the red storm, I can thank this video sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most detailed and exciting vehicle combat game ever made, and it's now free on PC and consoles. Take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armoured cars from the 1920s to the high-tech fighter jets and battle tanks of the modern day. The damage x-ray view has become my favourite feature, and with it, vehicle combat has never been more fun. Letting you see exactly how your vehicle was damaged, and showing you those perfect kill shots on the enemy you've been battling. The x-ray will show precisely where a shell or bullet penetrated, what components were damaged, and show the exact damage that led to the destruction. So, get immersed in the intense War Thunder combat, and enjoy the detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and some of the best sound effects around all while driving the most powerful war machines of the ages. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players in the high-octane PvP battles and dive into the adrenaline-pumping War Thunder experience. With a huge library of high-quality content, it's the perfect experience for military history fans like myself. So why not download War Thunder for free on PC or console using my links in the description or pinned comment. If you're new to the game or haven't played in 6 months, you'll get a huge welcome pack with some fun goodies to get you started on the battlefield. With 3 premium vehicles, a 50% experience and income boost to make those wins sweeter, as well as the very slick looking Eagle of Valor skin, plus 100,000 silver lions and a 7 day premium account boost. And with the rad storm over, it's time to proceed with phase 2, the takeover. I need a base of operations to survive, and Spectacle Island just so happens to be an island settlement, so it's perfectly legal for me to use this to my advantage. Sadly, it's no longer a serene place to visit, filled with hiking trails and greenery, but it's now more similar to its historic use as a garbage dump with wrecked structures and infested with lovely mutated crustaceans intent on eating me. My first attempt at clearing the island went deceivingly well, with me making it to the workbench without any instance, and figuring out I need to turn the generator on that can be found on a ship. But, of course, something went wrong. I guess we follow the wires, but let's explore first. Oh my god! What the hell? Oh my- Oh, shit! What's that? My leg hunter. Oh god, okay. Uh, this is bad. Oh god. How many are there? Just the one? I'm stuck. Okay, nope, that's not just the one. There's not just the one. Run, run, run. The ship's got to be safe, right? Oh god, they hit me. I've run out of stamina. This is bad. I'm about to die. After my calm and composed escape from the initial attack, I checked the ship for anything that could help me clear the island. Finding the luck bobblehead for a permanent and much needed luck boost, some Molotov cocktails, and a fat man launcher without any ammo. So what could go wrong when flipping on the power for the island? Well, a lot actually. 
Right. There they are. Oh my god. Okay, there's a queen. I was not expecting a queen. What the hell is going on? And I died without even firing a shot after stepping in some mysterious mile air queen goo I didn't see. Not wanting to go out in pathetic fashion again, I headed back to the island and prepared for the fight. Finding a hardened sniper rifle in a tool shed, a mini nuke for a fat man in the floor of an abandoned building, and stocked back up with the fat man launcher and Molotov cocktails for the fight ahead. Like any homeowner, I decided to defend my land by launching my nuke which apart from poisoning the area, did nothing to the Mile Lake Queen, before thinking I could kill it with some Molotov cocktails, and maybe get nice cooked crab claw. But, I nearly burnt myself alive with the first throw, and the second completely missed. So in desperation, I fired a few pipe pistol shots off before being killed again. No surprises here. Finally, I had an idea. If I could get the workshop active, I could build some turrets on the island to help me. So with the generator active, I sprint to the workshop, flip the breaker switch to get it working, and start my plan. Here we go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't get off. I need to get off the island. Of course, as soon as the My Lurks emerge, I again keep all composure and forget about my plan. I'd never wanted to live here, it was all just a side quest. I'm happy on my little cult barge. Well, that's a lie. So depressed, I eat my perfectly preserved pie, get some sleep, and head back to actually implement my plan. But there's not a mile lurk in sight, and I checked the entire island. So, I did some research, and it turns out the breaker box turns on the weird noise you all heard, which drives mile lurks away from the island. So after showing immense levels of courage, the island is now mine. So I can do what every new landowner does, go crazy with some home improvement work. After depositing all of my junk in the workshop, I make a few discoveries. The island already has a pre-installed water pump, so water is no longer an issue. There's a cooking station in case I find a steady source of food, and there's a few bodies to loot for some caps and items. Oh, and a strange scene involving an oceanside toilet and some skeletons, but I'm not going to dig deeper on that one. The island is also home to various wild plants which should buy me some time until I have a farm supply of food to rely on. With the island explored, it's time to demolish every piece of material I can find, and I spend far too long deforesting the local rat blaster forest for my next plan. I place down a bed and some storage for a small base of operations at the workbench, build a large shack with some basic beds so I have some expansion room for settlers, and plant every piece of fruit and veg I've found on the various floating structures in the ocean to start off food production. And finally, get the settlement beacon down with our extremely lucky material finds, giving me a glimmer of survival hope. And even better, a settler arrives shortly after. Who knows how they survived the journey through the radiation filled water, but I really don't care and get them working on producing more crops. With my basic needs covered for now and food production hopefully high enough to keep me alive, there's one issue that could still kill me. Radiation poisoning from the food I have to eat for survival. And with two Radaway right found in hours of gameplay, this will eventually cause the end of the run if there's no solution. The only way I can think of solving this solution is to build a medic stand, but I need to be level 14, have local leader rank 2, as well as 500 caps for that to happen, so it's time for the tried and tested levelling method of building a ridiculous amount of shelves on the wall. After levelling once, I make use of my low intelligence, taking idiot savant for random boosts and XP due to how sorry the game feels for me being an idiot. Then, the two hour process of levelling begins, with me building 1700 shells for a few levels, before having to scrap them all to get the wood back for more levels, and after losing any ounce of sanity I have left, decide to call off the levelling at midway through level 13, because I'm worried I won't have enough wood for building projects. I use my level ups to rank up Idiot Savant for higher XP games when that pops, as well as getting rank 1 of local leader in preparation for my Lex level up, as well as picking up Lead Belly to reduce the rads I get from food to buy me some more time to get my last level. But with materials running low and needing XP, I need to get back to exploring. So I launched Phase 3 and vowed to explore this watery world. Anything above or below the water needed to be explored. And there's a lot left out there. Exploration started on Spectacle Island with me finding a few more bodies with some much needed caps and a container full of safes hidden away which provided some loot from the one I could open. But I soon had to venture out to the ocean. Random islands formed of debris and old ships were very helpful with duffel bags of ammo and junk. More abandoned attempts at settlements floating on the surface with very helpful planters full of food I can take for my own settlement. An old power station with a camera for crystal and a very helpful underwater chest full of loot which I could put to good use. As well as an island full of mud crabs which after some flashbacks of my previous fight against them 
decided to swim away at Olympic level speeds. I also stumbled on a crate that had been used to grow some muck fruit, which happened to have some bags of fertiliser, which would come in handy if I needed to craft cages to trap raiders for potential caps. But that just reminded me that there's a huge floating base full of raiders, and now I've got some levels and loot behind me, it's time for some revenge. So after dropping off the junk from my looting expedition and harvesting and planting all of the new food, it's time to see if I can become the king of the ocean. Back where it all began. Need to kill as many people as I can. There could be some very nice equipment here. There's one. One kill. Feeling confident after a sniper kill, I soon got a dose of reality with simple turrets causing me a lot of trouble. There's a turret here as well. You can get that. Wait for the reload. Ah, I've been crippled. I can't see a thing. But after taking out, the pressure was off and I could clear the last raider who caused me trouble back at the start of the adventure. And with his death, managed to pick up a couple of armour upgrades, as well as some very helpful junk from the turrets I was taking out on the way. I could also take command of the ocean waves themselves to avoid gunfire from my enemies. I'm a moving target of these waves, sorry. One with the water. And luckily kept finding ammo for my sniper rifle, which allowed for some very nice sniper shots. These shots gave me so much confidence that I decided I was invincible, and could completely disregard cover or stealth before reality hit. Oh my god! What the hell? I've just been mini nuked. With a dose of reality in the form of a mini nuke, I'd lost all of my progress, and the long swim back did nothing to boost my spirits. But you can't become the king of the ocean without a worthy trial to test you. So I went back, and with a challenge on my hands, I took things a lot more serious, clearing out every enemy I'd encountered before with deadly precision. Well, apart from when I tried to use the grenades I'd found, but let's ignore that. Eventually, I'd made it back to the same point and could turn my sniper on the group in the tower, and they turn out to be pretty tough, even withstanding their own accidental nuke discharge. But the sniper is better, and after a few nice shots, the herd is beginning to thin out. I even managed to get a shot at the raider boss, who just barely survives, so head inside to finish the job. After clearing out the last couple of raiders I couldn't hit with my sniper from down below, I was prepared for some serious action further inside the base. But the action can wait as I take a quick nap in the boss's bed to make sure I don't lose all progress, and if I wasn't already refreshed, I was when I discovered a lovely legendary shotgun which causes some serious damage to limbs. Anticipating a tough fight with the final raider boss, I head out and just after loading, fire a panic shot, which happens to end the fight in disappointing fashion. But at least I can now claim I'm the strongest survivor left in the ocean, and assert my dominance over my fallen rival by turning him into fish food. After a leap of faith from the top of Libertalia, I remember I've neglected to search underwater, as well as the rivers of the wasteland, so it's time for a new adventure. But for now, some home improvements come first, as I'm out of Radaway and my food is low. So it's back to Spectacle Island to get everything in place to earn some caps and set up a thriving settlement in the middle of the ocean. Starting with turning the settler who has turned up while I was away into possibly the most underprepared guard ever seen, who can only watch half of the island, and has the worst pipe rifle known to man. With the junk I collected from turrets, I can afford a water purifier to solve the settlement water issue, but any leftovers can be collected and sold, so eventually I'll have an infinite cap source. I can also afford a windmill with the leftover junk. Honestly, it's pretty useless, but it helps stop the landscape of this island being mind-numbingly plain. I also build a shooting range for a bit of entertainment, as well as spending far too long building a bang average outdoor gym, with custom inspirational quote lighting to keep my malnourished settlers excited for gym gains. And it seems to work as they sure can pull off some impressive moves on the pommel horses. But this all seems to work as settlers keep arriving on the island, and at this point I'm fairly sure they're all synths. I mean they're not even getting wet from the swim over. With the population increase, I can afford to make a scavenging area to try and get some more junk to help me expand with some of the rarer items like turrets. And I build a second house, so while I'm adventuring, there's a chance a few more people show up. Nothing fancy, but it's better than the streets. And with all of that covered, it's time for my uncomfortably moist exploits to continue, 
and we begin scouring the ocean floor for anything of value. The issue is the water in Fallout is unbelievably murky, so I struggle to see anything. Until I find a weird camera angle in third person, which causes a bit of a glitch, letting me see most structures without rendering the water. But this game just works exactly as intended, so I feel no guilt in using this and proceed to discover the secrets of the ocean. It turns out the water actually has a lot of hidden areas, with huge pipe networks I seem to lead somewhere, but eventually enter the border of the map with nothing in terms of loot that I could find. There's also countless sunken boats and cargo ships. Some contain loot like this boat, which potentially belongs to a pre-war millionaire with his bag of money, but there's also plenty of completely empty ships which is odd. Surely for something which takes this much effort to place, you'd add in a secret loot spot or easter egg. And other than the mutated dolphins that I kept finding around the surface and boats, there wasn't much of value underwater, but what could I find in the extensive riverways of the wasteland? The first river landmark that was interesting was the USS Constitution, a strange flying pirate ship. But with no way up despite this technically not being on the ground, I couldn't take part in historically accurate robot pirate warfare. Shallow water was explorable in this area though, and when wading through I stumbled on a fusion core, which is upsetting because I think I missed an underwater suit of power armor while exploring. But eventually, I did find some action in the river, with a small raider group being just close enough to catch their attention. I heard someone. Hello? Legendary raider. Um, can I fight this? There he is. Oh god. I've whiffed two shots. He's mutated instantly. Oh god, run! This is not good. How they all hit me in the water? Ow! He's a blood packs. I hope I don't get hit again. See cover. Oh, this is bad. Why have I done this? Why did I decide to do this? Legendary down. Oh, he's up there. There's no way I can get him. And with a few more shots, I managed to take the raiders down, but can't quite reach them. Oh, there's a legendary just there. Can't reach him. Hold on. I've got a grenade. I'm an idiot. Alright, how do I do this? Blow him this way, please. Yeah, I got one! Did any others go? <gasps> yes! Is that him? Please be the legendary settler. Yes! I found a legendary from the water. Troubleshooter's laser rifle. With that success, the river soon dried up with nothing majorly notable to be found. I did find a cap stash on a boat, but not enough to make my medic stand, and they also considered a settlement a Taffington boathouse, but even though it's built over water, I ruled it out. And with now near constant illness from swimming in water that's about as polluted as the rivers in the UK, I head back to the island ejected, and still missing just a few caps, so it's time to bring the caps to me. And what better way than launching Phase 4, the Spectacle Island Family Zoo. If I can't find what I need in the wasteland, then I'll bring the wasteland to me, it may not win any ethics awards, but it'll be entertaining. The first step is to make some more home improvements to try and get a settler with a Brahmin to join, so food production is ramped up, and I drop down a couple of feeding troughs to encourage one to appear. And after finally levelling up, I can afford to take local leader too, so now just a few more caps until survival. The Brahmin will produce fertiliser, which can be turned into jet for raider traps, and I just so happen to have a couple of fertiliser bags from my previous adventures, so with Jet Crafted, it's time for my first zoo exhibit. The Wild Raider will be captured in my custom exhibit with 360 degree viewing opportunities and a window for shooting them. Surely nothing can go wrong with this design at all. Well, turns out the steel does nothing to stop bullets and my first catch goes horribly wrong. And this forces me to rethink my exhibit design to keep me safe. Can I get over the wall? I don't think he can. There he is. Got eyes on. Raider scum. Get 
Done. Sadly, this raider didn't have a single cap on his body, so back to waiting for another catch. And while I wait, it's time for some chores. First, collecting the excess water produced every day and storing it for future sale, and then handing out armour and weapons in case I'm raided, now that I've increased my chance with this trap. And as if I cursed myself, I spotted something in the distance. Uh, we are being raided, it's a good thing I was arming them. Oh god. Not like this. I can't lose people. One's dead. Oh my god. No! Okay, raids were a bad idea. After that terrible attempt at island defence, I made sure everyone was armed with better weapons and scrapped some junk for steel so I could afford a turret to help me survive. While waiting for the inevitable raid to happen, a Brahmin shows up so I can finally get a stockpile of fertiliser started for Jet. And just to rub in how stupid I've been to open the island to raids, I find a random corpse called Randy, who has the caps I need to open the medic stand. And after reviewing the footage, he's been in the island since the very beginning. And because this game is evil, look what happens. I need to fall back to the house, let my settlers deal with it. After my initial bravery in the face of battle, I get the turret back into action, and from a comfortable distance, we combine to take out the last of the raiders. I really am impressed with how I've handled confrontation in this challenge. But, with the attack survived, I can finally solve my final survival hurdle and build the medic stand. And once done, employ a random settler with no medical training to cure my ailments. Now illness and radiation are a thing of the past. And better yet, this doctor comes with a nice inventory of caps so I can sell my purified water and other junk, and turn that profit into other shops with everything I'll ever need. So I build the Wasteland's premier shopping mall and add in the trading stand so I can buy junk, and the zoo project can really begin. First, I start buying any oil and copper I can find to ramp up production of purified water for selling in the shops, resulting in a much improved water farm. I improve the island's defence by adding in machine gun turrets everywhere to hopefully avoid any repeat raids, and there's more enough firepower to fight back if we're unlucky, followed by rapid expansion of the shopping district any time I bring in any caps, resulting in me having a shop for weapons and armour, and even a bar for some neat food and drink purchases. Eventually, there's enough settlers to man every shop, which is great for my cap count. And finally, the piece de resistance of the Taurus trap, my family zoo, which has passed all health and safety checks I've conducted, featuring the likes of Yao Guai, Deathclaw exhibits, Super Mutant and Mutant Hounds, and the classic reader, it's a wholesome zoo, all slowly built by finding the ingredients needed to make the various cages over the course of two hours. But it wasn't so wholesome when everything went wrong with the creatures trying to attack me, my settlers deciding to kill every exhibit animal I'd spent my time collecting, and the Deathclaw matriarch somehow escaping the enclosure and brutally killing me. A disgrace considering I've treated it so well. But I won't give up on my dream, so I take the Animal Friend and Wasteland Whisperer perks so I can craft a machine. And this machine makes it so any animals I capture are completely non-hostile when turned on, so I can actually have a family-friendly zoo. And with some minor enclosure improvements, we can now enjoy the various exotic animals found in the wasteland with absolutely no risk. Well, maybe some slight risk, as they all seem to be escape artists who, when out of the enclosure, will still brutally attack other zoo animals. And the occasional time revolt against the mutants I keep catching who have weapons. Who am I to interfere with nature though? It's a disfigured bear eat mutant dog world after all. With the zoo complete, so is my time within this watery torture chamber. It turns out you can live on survival mode within the confines of the ocean, and eventually thrive in this environment. It just takes around 16 hours of your life to get to this point, and a bucket load of sanity from the amount of grinding and waiting required. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video, and don't forget it's available on PC, Xbox and Playstation for free, so use my link in the description or pinned comment to take advantage of the amazing bonus pack, which will give you everything you need to jump right into the battlefield, including premium vehicles, in-game currency and a great vehicle skin to show off with.